it's a beautiful quote from way back that says that a, a community will always be doomed if it does not take care of its children and its elders. It's very distressing to live in a community where people can disappear. So the Elder Justice Center is a program that helps people that may disappear from our view and that need help and access. Eliza Bryant Village has been an innovator and will be an innovator in the space of social justice for our seniors. I commend Eliza Bryant for being a forward thinker and a leader in this role. The Auxiliary uh, was born in 1969. When we come over to the village and we're involved with the residents, uh, they're so happy that somebody is here to talk to them and be involved with them. But they don't know that they're making me happy by just feeling that I'm contributing to somebody else's well-being. We usually ended up always making a large contribution to Eliza Bryant Village. Since the Elder Justice Center has come up and we know that they need money for the repairs and what have you, it might be nice to name, take and pay for the naming of a room. All of the members agreed that that was a good idea for us to do that. goes back to my mother. My mother uh, suffered from Alzheimer's and, um, and luckily she had a family that cared for her. Uh, she had the financial resources to be well taken care of when it was time to go to a skilled nursing facility. Uh, the Elder Justice Center is a very exciting program. Abused adults, uh, elders, uh, whether it's financial abuse, uh, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, it exists. I want to be part of this to make life for those people who can't speak for themselves a little bit better. In the 1950s, when the community saw the need for um, nursing home services for uh, older uh, African Americans. Bill got involved with uh, the um, nursing home that was then on Cedar, and it was in need of uh, more beds. Bill saw the need to keep that service in the Huff community. The Dorcas Society had a uh, facility on Addison Avenue, and Bill will tell the story about getting that facility for a dollar and uh, being able to move the nursing home to that site. He is in his 97th year and uh, he is still, uh, you know, uh, bright, concerned. His passion uh, for everything extended very late in his life. So it's not just what, he, what he's done, but how consistently uh, he's done it and how long he's done it. It's just a remarkable story. We gathered up uh, individual contributions from lawyers and a uh, contribution from the firm itself in support of naming a room after Bill at, in the Elder Justice Center. I would say, and by the way, I don't think I've ever said yes to a request as quickly on anything. <laughs> I wanted to name a room in the Elder Justice Center to, I guess, to have some kind of permanence to support. Um, my mother, Kathy Hancock, is an incredibly generous woman, um, and I'm able to be generous because of her generosity. Uh, I have known and known of Danny Williams for quite some time and have a great deal of respect for the community service that he does, the mission mind that he has when he comes to run an organization, the caring product and service that he creates when he runs an organization. I also was very attracted to the fact that this seems to be a replicable model program. So from a funding standpoint, it's exciting to be able to support something that um, can be replicated elsewhere. We don't really name a lot of things. We don't 
generally aren't in a position to give gifts large enough to name a lot of things, um, but we did find an opportunity here to hopefully inspire and give an example to others who may want to support something that I think is, uh, a, again, a very worthy, worthy endeavor in the community. Since United Black Fund has been in existence since 1981, and our mission has been to uh, strengthen the African American community to provide uh, means of self-sufficiency. And when I think about the alignment with uh, Eliza Bryant Village, it is really paired up nicely, but for our seniors in the African American community. Elder abuse financially and physically is something that we care greatly about. The innovation in identifying new ways in which they can support seniors, not just with uh, health care um, and a village as beautiful as this, but also provides value to the community that strengthens um, not only just this neighborhood in Cleveland, but the entire city. Oftentimes in society, we put our seniors to the side. And the work here at Eliza Bryant does just the opposite. It was a pleasure to, to, to actually support this effort. Originally from Brooklyn, New York, um, when my family moved here to Cleveland, we were homeless. We lived in the Salvation Army, which was a shelter for women and children. And when you're in the shelter, uh, they have something called transitional housing. So the very first place that they sent us to was to War 7. And one of the things that when I became councilman that uh, I made a, a, a promise is that I will always be of support to Eliza Bryant. And it really goes back to my mom. One of the places that she would take us to was to Eliza Bryant, to spend time with the seniors and to read. And um, I never forgot that, I never forgot that. We are pledging $25,000 here for Eliza Bryant for the Elder Justice Center. And uh, they're giving me the opportunity to, to name the room after my mother, the same woman who, um, you know, the same woman who made sure I came here to, uh, to take care of the elders now will always be remembered here in this place. This is a, a big deal to me and um, I'm thankful that Eliza Bryant has given me an opportunity to, uh, to be of assistance.